Hello. I've got a new toy. Trouble is, this toy was voted for by you lot. I was going to buy the £90 one and you said I should buy the £300 one. Now, as a result, I've got to take a leaf out of Dana's book and I'm going full business human. And today is the first step. I want to make 15 bottle openers. I've already got the parts for it. I've got some scrap wood. I want to have zero investment. I've already spent a bucket of money on this thing. This thing should pay for itself eventually, but the first thing is getting started. Let's go. So what scrap wood am I talking about? This scrap wood. Now, I say scrap, but I did pay for it. Every one of these lengths cost me 20 pence from my local timber reclamation yard. Now, some of them are a bit battered. I didn't really have much of a choice. I just rocked up, said, I want 100 lengths of this, and some guy just threw it all in the back of the van for me. This one's all right, and this one's very heavy. They did say there was a mix of hardwood and some pine in there, and you can almost kind of tell this one here is light as a feather, but this one weighs a ton. I'm going to sift through, get the heavier ones out, rip them down on the table saw, and see what I can use. Now, unfortunately, this is one I've already ripped down. They're not wide enough because the little bottle top openers are 40 mil and this is 40 mil and I need about 45 all in all. So I'm gonna rip some of these down and actually glue them together, leave them to dry and then start cutting out my profiles. But full business human activated. I was certainly activated all right. I was feeling very confident about this project. I'm feeling certain I've got a design in my mind that will work. I just don't know what wood I'm going to be dealing with. I've got no idea what these batons are, just that they're a mixture of different weights and densities of wood. Now, my first job is to split them roughly down the middle. The idea is that one of these batons is gonna go as the middle segment within two very thin strips. Whichever wood has the best features, the best grain, that's gonna go in the middle. The other wood I'll kind of thin out and put as strips on the side. I'm cutting more batons than I'm gonna need. I probably only need two batons, but I don't know what wood I'm dealing with. So I thought before I put it through the table saw, probably a better idea to put it through the thickness. I'd get rid of some of the scorch marks. There was a lot of scorch marks from the table saw on this in particular, and I would put money on that being oak. It is rock solid. It's got the same kind of patterns and striations, I think you call them, as oak does. This is definitely good stuff. So this will go in the center when I glue all this up. As for the rest of it, it's definitely not majority hardwood, but I've got to work with what I've got. I could do with finding some more of these oak ones. Trouble is, I've got a hundred of those batons. I don't really want to slice in half. 100 just to find a handful of oak okay so this is what i'm left with now i've still got all of the other timber that i milled down but the reason i wanted to do so many is because for this first batch i wanted to make sure i was getting the best wood i could so i really like the contrast between this oak and then this red woody type wood 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 now this is too much material these are kind of what i'm making now this was a prototype, but turns out, first time, I really like the size of it. It's really good to hold in your hand. It's very good at opening beers, more importantly. But as you can see, this is far too wide. However, I want to be working with a bit too much material rather than too little. I think what I'm gonna do is glue these up as whole lengths. Now, you'll notice there's some screw holes that are gonna be visible, but these fit perfectly inside each of those screw holes. I've only got 15 of these little bottle opener things at the minute anyway, and I figured I can get eight out of each section, so I've got a little bit of wriggle room. Think rather than make a table saw jig, because my table saw is not really made for it, it's from Aldi Middle Isle, what I'll probably end up doing is cutting the taper on the table saw. I'll make a jig for that, that I can clamp to, and then the depth of the 
the blade on the saw will allow me to do that and I think that'll be a lot safer than trying to work with a piece this small on the table saw, especially that table saw. For now though, I'm gonna glue all these up and then I'll see you in a few days because I'm going away somewhere. I'm gonna try and find somewhere in the country to go in the van that it's not raining, except it's raining everywhere. I've learned the hard way about not using enough clamps. So, I used all the clamps. This looks like a monster. It's actually been quite a while since I glued these pieces up. You'll have to excuse my appearance. I need a beard shave, I need a head shave, I am absolutely filthy. We're doing some work on the house at the minute. It's been a long day's graft and I'm tired. So I thought, what better time to come into the garage and finish my bottle openers? and I can barely keep my eyes open. Anyway, first thing I'm gonna do, clean all the glue off these, then I'm gonna run them through the planer just to make sure that they are perfect um, thicknesses. Everything's lined up pretty well, but I want it to be right if I'm gonna be selling these. After that, I'm gonna make a jig, maybe a couple of jigs. First jig's going to be to get the profile of the bottle opener shape. I want these, somebody described them as coffin shapes, which, I'll take that, I'm happy with that. And to do that, I ordered a couple of clamps a while ago for a different project. I'm gonna use these. Now I'm sure you've seen these before. These tighten up so you can decide where you want it. You use these primarily in jigs. Now, the thing I like about these is they are cheap. Less than two pound each on Amazon. I'll try and remember to put the link down below. Anyway, I'm going to do the boring stuff off camera, like scraping glue off and running these through the thicknesser. Then I'll bring you back to show you the jig I've set up for the profile, if I manage to set it up. This is a close-up of what we're left with. That might not look like much to some, but for somebody that only works with pallets, really, that was beautiful. So I cut down my blanks on the table saw using a stop block. I also threw an old drawer bottom underneath to make it zero clearance. I cannot tell you how much fun I've just had over the last 20 minutes. And I really mean genuine fun. I mentioned in the last segment about making jigs and I've always been the sort of person that watches a woodworking video and say, oh, I'm just gonna use this jig I knocked up. And I always think, oh God, what a big faff to make something to cut something out. Make jigs, especially when you've got all of these to do. So these are my blanks, if you like. And then I've made two jigs. So this first one goes with my, my new toy. And all I've done is I've, I'm using old ply look, it's painted on one side. So I've got these two bolts that slide in like that. Now there's a bit of play, but once I've got everything lined up, I tighten these, that nestles in there, I clamp down, and then that will fall in the perfect place every time. I'll be able to rattle through these, do all of them with the bigger force in a bit, run back through, do them all with the smaller force in a bit. Once that's done, then this hooks up to the mitre saw. So this one here, the blade is gonna come down here. I'm gonna set the mitre saw to maybe only like a three or four degree angle, maybe increase it, start to bring it up. I don't want to cut all the way to the glue line. But if I clamp this down, line that edge up with the top of the blade, turn the angle, and of course I've got this to tighten up, I'm thinking that this is going to create a lovely cut every single time because it's got the board underneath it, it'll be almost like a zero clearance jobby. And then once I've done that side, all I've got to do is flip it over. The top side will be the same thickness, so I'll line that up, press it on, clamp it down, run it again. I'll be able to rattle through all these. In theory, I haven't tested it yet. This one I cut anyway, even though it's got screw hole in, because this is gonna be my test piece. Let's try it.
by the way, if you want a review on how good these Bosch drill bits are, that's your review. Look at that. When I was at school, I used to dream of being able to sharpen a pencil and get... Yeah, um, let's not go into that. The jig for the mitre saw didn't work quite as well. The first cut was perfect because everything was lined up square. The second cut was a bit more difficult because of the material you'd taken off and the thickness of the blade. I didn't really account for it, so I'm glad I used my test piece here because in the end I had to move everything over by hand just a touch on the second cut. Still, was able to rattle through these in no time at all. Okay, first thing I want to show you is these. Look, it's like a little stack of ice cream cones. I can't help it, I'm a child. Anyway, time. To cut the 40mm force the bit and the 25mm force the bit, using this jig took eight minutes to do 16 of these. I then went and wasted two of them on the mitre saw. That jig is great for the first cut, but that millimetre difference after you've made that first cut means that when you flip it over it's not even on both sides and I didn't realise on the first two. They're all right but I wouldn't be comfortable selling them. So then what I had to do was then do all of the first cuts, move the jig over by one mil and then do all the second cuts. So it wasn't a biggie. That only took 10 minutes. Now I'm going to try and rig my belt sander to the bench again without blowing it up this time. Give these a sand, give these a finish, attach the metal bits. Yeah, nearly there. As you can probably see by the fresh t-shirt, it's a new day. It was getting late last night and I was getting a bit annoyed trying to clamp this thing down to the workbench. What I was finding was it's actually got a vent on this side and a vent on this side, which means I can't block either of them. So what I've done is I've propped it up in a block of wood. The vent on this side is hanging over this vent under here has got airspace and the one on top. <sighs> Will it work? I don't know. It seems fairly secure. I'm just going to have to try and see. So, I'm fairly happy with that. One second, let me check the recording time. Yeah, that took one minute to do this whole thing. Now, don't get me wrong, there's some sharp edges that are going to need a bit of refining. But I'll be able to do that when I hand sand it, because I'm going to hand sand all of these to about 180 grit, I would say, so that the finish works well. So if I'm allocating a minute to these, and I'll probably get quicker then that's a worthwhile investment. 15 minutes to give them a rounded over effect. Really nice to hold. All right, I'm going to put my ear pods in, put some tunes on. See you soon. Hello, welcome to the land of sadness. Now, I'm wearing a glove because the belt sander worked very, very well. In fact, Stupid me wasn't concentrating and I actually took a tiny bit of skin off my fingertip. It's no big deal, but although blood, sweat and tears have gone into this project, I don't really want the blood stains on the project. Though now if I'm without a fingertip, what one-fingered crime can you do? And after that sadness of sanding, I was almost a bit sad that this project was over. I punched a little guide hole with a nail and a hammer because I haven't got a punch. That's where the screw's gonna go. But then I just had to rub some mineral oil and beeswax on it and it was finished. And I must say, I was sad to see the back of this project. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So there you go. Probably four hours graft hands-on graft in total. Now, I'm not going to be making my millions of these, but I did bother to put them on a fancy tile because these suckers are going on Etsy. And to think they were made from these 20 pence lengths of reclaimed cement-covered lumber. 
I couldn't be more happy. I posted a picture of these on Instagram yesterday and I meant what I said on there. I've built a lot of things that I've been pleased with, happy with, but I don't think I've ever built anything I've been proud of. And I am proud enough to sell these. I'm gonna be putting these on Etsy so long as they work. Only one way to find out. <sighs> Tastes a bit funny, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh well, back to the grind. Take care, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, all those things. But if you want your hands on one of these, there are only 15 to go for now. So head over to my Etsy page. Take care.